Okay, what's the next topic? New ah, home builds. <laughs> who doesn't like new houses? My gosh, it takes me back to Phillips and my early days together when we were getting home decorating ideas. We love to tour model homes. I mean, this is, um, and you get excited and you think, gosh, this is, these are amazing. The builders spend hundreds of thousand dollars creating uh, beautiful uh, vignettes and models all decorated and furnished for you to go through. And of course, to get you excited so that you want to purchase a product that's not even built yet. And it's, you know, you look at a, a piece of dirt. But uh, new home builds are not as prevalent as they once were, especially here in Orange County, because we're getting built out. But um, as we move forward into this topic, we are seeing in Lake Forest, in Rancho Mission Viejo, for example, in South County, in uh, West Huntington Beach, believe it or not, uh, just near the Bolsa Chico wetlands, we have new builds going on. And uh, in Costa Mesa, we have what are called infill new builds, which are uh, commercial areas that are being redone and uh, adding uh, kind of urban vertical style living. So the builders are getting creative. They're using what land is left in Orange County. And we feel this is a topic that definitely needs to be visited today. And Lane has been showing our buyers a lot of new home builds lately. So I'll let him move on and give us some uh, tips and tricks and uh, things to watch for. No, new home builds are, are really popular still. And, and we get asked that a lot. I mean, Orange County is relatively built out, but there are still some areas where uh, builders are per buy, building new homes. Uh, you see a lot in South Orange County and like the Rancho Mission Viejo space. We actually have the Huntington Beach, Shea, the Shea Builders in Huntington Beach. They're releasing uh, their current phase that will be ready in July. And they have some current uh, move-in readies, actually, maybe like two or three of them left right now. Um, but when you go tour a, a new home, but there's a couple things you want to look out for. One, obviously, Scott alluded to the the models are absolutely beautiful. They go with the most like the most upgrades you can possibly think of are put into those models. So the your home at the end of the day is probably not going to look like the model home. You do have the option to add a bunch of upgrades, and there's and you have to pay for them though too. So you ba they're basically going to give you a starting price, and you have to add in a bunch of upgrades when it's all said and done. And then also, if you have any sort of front or backyard space, it's going to be left with dirt, and you're going to be responsible within a certain amount of time frame to be able to finish off the landscape. And that would based on if they're if you're in an HOA, there are probably going to be HOA rules that it has to be done in a certain amount of time. So you have to be prepared to not only, you know, finance and get a loan and, and come up with a down payment to purchase it, but you're going to have to have a little bit of cash reserves on hand after you close to be able to do some of those upgrades in the backyard or maybe some finishes as far as the lighting fixtures, because not everything is completely done and finished as you do see in some of the models. Even though if you wait till the very, very end, those models are uh, going to be available for purchase, but based on a premium. Um, you just have to be prepared for that. Now, a couple different things too. They have a financing program where every builder is most likely going to have a preferred lender. And if you go with their preferred lender, uh, you can get up to 20, I've seen most recently $25,000 worth of credits towards your upgrades. So that definitely helps um, if you do qualify with their preferred lender. Obviously, make sure you're getting the best fee and cost structure when it comes to your mortgage rate and your cost for that loan, uh, which I've seen typically they've been, they've been really competitive. But the benefit of using their preferred lender is you do get a bunch of credits towards towards uh, your upgrades. One other thing too is you're able to have some sort of buyer representation. So if you need some help and you need somebody that's in, a, in your corner, we can definitely help you uh, purchase a new home build. And we definitely recommend that you do so too, because obviously if you go straight to the builder, the builder is going to maybe not tell you everything and what to know and what to expect. One thing that they tell you is obviously you can have your inspections with the with the new home builders and you can walk through with them and maybe they, they're purposely not going to show you some things or maybe they're not qualified licensed home inspectors, but we recommend and that's one thing that we're here and we bring our inspector in to do a home inspection. We found things in the past, like the furnace not being, uh, not operating properly. And we we're able to get $5,500 worth of credits. Uh, and we, there was another case where we saw these tiny little scratches on a home inspection on the windows and sliders that the builders might not have pointed out to you. Uh, but because we were there, we were able to get all the windows and all the sliders in that home completely replaced. So definitely have somebody in your corner. Uh, definitely bring in a buyer representation. Uh, you have to bring your buyer representative on the first visit. So if you are planning to tour the homes, make sure you have your buyer representative with you on that first visit. Scott, I know I've been speaking mostly on these new home builds, so I don't know if there's anything that you wanted to bring up that I left out, left out but uh, there's a lot to think about when you're buying a new home. There's a lot to think about, and I think Lane covered everything beautifully, but I'm going to add some uh, 
add some of my own spin to, to I think, each of those areas. Well, number one is uh, you might think, well, why would I need bio representation? Why would I need a SAC and SOAN representative? And, and obviously, if we're getting compensated somehow from the builder, is that affecting what I pay? The answer on that one is absolutely not. Think of buying a new home as going to a travel agent. Um, back in the day, and there still are travel agents, um, you go to the travel agent, you're not going to pay any more for that trip than you would if you booked it all yourself. But the travel agent has expertise. They have nuances. They have ways that they can package everything up and add value to you. And they're getting compensated by the airlines, by the hotels and so forth. And the hotels, the airlines are happy to pay that fee because it's then an area they don't have to deal with because they have a, a, an expert that's putting everything together and watching out for the client. That's exactly how a new home build goes. The builders are thrilled to, I mean, most, uh, most instances to uh, pay a referral fee to a broker, an agent that is going to represent their buyer because they know that we have the expertise, we have the skill to help move the transaction along, help the buyer stay excited, help uh, explain question marks that they might have. Number two, uh, so that's, I want to get that out of the way right off, right off the bat. But Elaine's point is very key. Do not go to the model homes and sign anything. If you're thinking about uh, a new home builds, call your Sack and Stone representative. Let them know what you're thinking about. We also will be able to, of course, if you're selling something first, be able to give you an idea of the net equity that you're going to be getting out of your current home. And that's the second point I want to make. Some of the builders, unlike the uh, resellers, are going to perhaps take a contingent offer and allow you to have a little bit of time to sell your home. They may or may not have a realtor that they would recommend to you. But if you go in already with your realtor in play, and we have a great reputation throughout Orange County, and many of the builders know who we are, we're going to uh, make sure that you're in a much better position to um, get your, uh, get, I'm going to say offer accepted, because with builders, you do pay their price, but to be able to uh, put together a transaction. Second, going on to the upgrades, as Lane mentioned, absolutely, you're going to have the ability to uh, purchase upgrades through the builder. They'll often have a design center, which will be a specific home that's set up and have all the, the shutters, the floors, the, the cabinet upgrades, et cetera, available to you. You need to weigh out the benefits and the costs because you're going to be paying retail plus when you go through the builder, but you're also going to get the benefit of one-stop shopping. You may be getting credits back, as Lane said, from the lender. So you want to carefully look at the cost-benefit analysis of that. If you're the creative type that says, you know what, I've got a designer or I want to go outside the grid looking for this carpet or that flooring or, or, or whatnot, then you may want to go ahead and just take the basic, you know, the basic house. And if you are getting some, uh, some uh, benefits from the lender, maybe you use that to pay down your, your mortgage interest rate or something like that. Look at look at your options with any credits that you might be getting and don't ever feel shoehorned into what they may suggest because oftentimes they'll have a track that they want you to go down, but it's not required uh, that you are to do that. And the third thing is, is, you know, along with these things, you do need to have some vision and you knew, do need to realize, for example, okay, if I get a backyard that's just dirt, how much is it going to cost me to uh, finish off that that backyard. And the, the same thing with your upgrades interior-wise. Um, oftentimes, the appliances that come with the house. You could be spending a million and a half dollars on a tracked house or a new tracked home build subdivision, and they do put in the cheapest of the cheap appliances and so forth. So take a look at all those things and consider upgrades. And I know I've been talking a little bit now, and there's a third <laughs> topic that we want to talk about, and that is when you are looking to buy, you're weighing out, do I buy a resale or do, or do I buy a brand new home? Okay, the new homes have appeal, but there's always things that we look at, and that's where Lane, Philip, and I and our team come into play is to have that dialogue with our clients to help you kind of do an A-B analysis. Uh, yes, and I want to talk about a couple things there because you put, brought up some really good points. Um, yes, a lot of new home builders are going to accept contingent offers, uh, but they're only going to be accepting contingent offers for the ones I've seen because the marketplace is very competitive right now for buyers. They, they have If you have a later phase, like the ones I was mentioning in Huntington Beach through Shea, those are going to be released in the summer. They, they're going to accept a contingent offer for those ones. Now, but you still have to get your house sold within a couple months and, and or basically 60 days, I guess. And so if they're not going to be ready for until the summer, you might either have to do a rent back for your house that you own, 
or you have to find temporary housing. And that's also assuming that the builder is going to be finished on time. Any of the ones that are ready to move in now, they're probably not going to accept a contingent offer in this marketplace. So that also brings us up, as far, up to a point as far as timing is concerned. So when we're talking about timing in the contract for a new home build, they're going to say that they're not responsible for any of the dates as far as when things are going to be finished because they know that a lot of times it might not finish online or, or uh, on time. And maybe there's some weather delays. Maybe somebody gets sick as, as far as the contract is concerned and it gets delayed a little bit. So they do, they're trying to take the responsibility away from them. However, we have been in cases where clearly it was the builder's fault as far as timing. And I've had clients in temporary housing where we were able to negotiate the builder to pay for one month or two months of those temporary of the temporary housing. Uh, so make sure again, that's the importance of having a representation by a representation for yourself because the builders aren't going to tell you that they're that they're going to allow that and so we go to we fight in your corner to make sure that if you are at a loss as far as timing is concerned or you're in some sort of temporary housing and they didn't meet any of the timing restraints and even though they took themselves out of it in the contract we're still going to be able to fight and get you a little bit there too um, one thing i also want to mention as far as new home builders and and um, it it's along the lines of appreciation so we've had clients that have bought new home builds and then maybe sold a two month or two years down the road and I will say homes aren't new home builds aren't appreciating as quickly two years down the road or so. And the reason why, um, one, if you're in, if you're looking for a new home build or you're looking for a newer home, um, you're going to have buyers that are willing to maybe pay just a little bit more to get something brand new as opposed to something that's two years old. So the buyer pool kind of goes down on a two year old two year old home a little bit because. Uh, there might be, you know, if I pay 25,000 or 30,000 more, I actually get a brand new home as opposed to one that's two years old. So these new homes have a little bit of that new car feel to where it maybe goes down just a little bit or maybe doesn't appreciate at all for a couple of years when you drive it off the lot type of thing, uh, where as opposed to maybe an older home. So if you are purchasing a new home uh, and you're looking at it as far as an investment, you have to be willing to either rent it out or hold on to it for a little bit longer because you are going to have buyers after two years that are willing to pay maybe a little bit of a premium for a brand new home as opposed to a two-year-old home. I think Lane's right on. So if you're considering a brand new home, you want to really look at your you know, your your job situation is a transfer possible in the works or something. You want to make sure that you're probably going to be set for five years or so. And most people, I think, don't go into a home purchase thinking they're going to move in two years. But we do often see people get transferred in life. Uh, things can change. So I think that's an excellent point, Lane. And I was actually going to bring up something along those exact same lines. When you're thinking about purchasing and tying right into what Lane said, you want that that newness, the excitement of a brand new home. You've got to remember, do you have the wherewithal to be you know, living with dirt for up to six months? These oftentimes have HOAs. Your landscaping is going to have to get approved. It's not a matter of you just move in and you put in your, your brand new yard. The same thing with some of your improvements, you know, or, or you want to come in and change out some of the builder things. You, your kitchen, your bathrooms may be in a little bit of upheaval. You have to determine, do you have the, the wherewithal for that, especially given these days where so much of our time is now spent at home versus, you know, going to the office for eight, 10, 12 hours a day, and then coming home and the workers are gone and you're, you're okay. We've got to think about our threshold for that. And on those same lines, maybe what you do as a purchaser, if you're craving that new home feel, is look for that seller who is having to move after a couple of years. And we get something that's just a couple of years old and it does feel like a new home. And maybe winner, winner, chicken dinner, the upgrades they've chosen, the way they've done the backyard, is in line with your aesthetic and your taste. And then you can get a finished product. And chances are you're getting the home at a price of, of what the seller paid two years ago as exactly. well. So yeah, you're not overpaying. You're not paying a premium on something that's brand new. But like Scott said, that the feeling and the look of it is exactly what they're doing today anyways. Right on. And I think, again, in closing, understanding this to full loop, as Lane said, I think it's to understand the upgrades that you put in when you, if you were to buy brand new and you did have to sell, you're not going to get dollar for dollar most likely out of those. You'll get a package kind of deal for your house, so to speak, but it's not where you can just say, well, I've put in, you know, $60,000 in upgrades and believe you me, it adds up very quickly. I've, I've been there once before yeah. uh, in Huntington beach. So uh, a lot of exciting things to think about. And again, I think it comes back full circle, get the conversation started with the sack and stone team before you find yourself kind of in deep water in um, and got to pull up the boots. We're always yeah. here to help you at the beginning, weigh out all the options in any direction that you want to go. 
That's exactly right. And Scott, I don't know how we do it, but every week we seem to manage to get that 30 minute mark all right on the dot. And that's what we're approaching right now. So as always, thank you so much for watching our SNL show. I say it every week, but we love doing these. We enjoy doing them. I don't care if there's one viewer, zero viewers or a hundred. I We're going to continue to do them. And if you uh, have any questions uh, that you might want us to answer on a future show, please leave that in the comments box. If you, we said something that either you or somebody you know might find value, please share that with them or on your page. That's always spreading the word and spreading the love is the best benefit and help to us and to others around that might find value for any of the topics that we're discussing. Absolutely. And even though we sometimes don't have that many viewers on the call itself, we're super excited that these have a shelf life. We get views over the weekend and in the future. So we know they have value. And I want to give a big shout out to our producer and uh, Sack and Stone team marketing director, Stipa Lasik. He's behind the scenes, making sure that Lane and I look good every week. And we've got um, our headings to talk about and so forth. And on that note, our next two weeks are going to be jam packed with topics that are right now current for buyers and sellers and some tips for living and making the most out of your home right now since we're spending so much time there. So at 29 minutes and 26 seconds, I want to say don't miss the next couple weeks. We look forward to seeing you then. And thanks so much for watching today. See ya.